All right. Good night and welcome to the live. Um, you know, we supposed to do the live last night on endometriosis and fibroids, ovarian cysts, PCOS. It works. So tonight is women's night, women problems. And um, if you are a woman and you're looking at a program, uh, I want you to tell me if you could guess how many women per year lose their uterus to uterine fibroids. If you have the answer for me, I want you to put it on the screen. On the screen. How many women do you think lose their fibroid, uh, their, their uterus, doing a hysterectomy every year to fibroids, especially black women? How many? And if you give me the right answer, then we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna show you statistics also that um, it's a lot of women losing their, their uterus, and sometimes the the, the, the women are not supposed to the doctors not supposed to remove a woman's uterus, you know, but they do it prematurely because they don't know how to fix fibroids. Okay, so tonight we're gonna talk about endometriosis. We're gonna talk about PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome ovarian cysts, uterine fibroids, and how you can use natural treatment to get rid of these growths if they're not too big. All right, we're going to give you centimeters and what we do in herbal medicine in terms of, you know, getting rid of your fibroids, the ovarian cysts, and even fixing PCOS and endometriosis, because they all have one cause, just one cause. All right, um, you wanted to say something, Chris, or that we have another program coming up soon? <laughs> Yeah. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody out in live. <laughs> Good night, everybody on the live. So, yeah. Oh, hold on, hold on, before you talk. I looked at a few, a, a live video the other day, and I saw a few people who was very disrespectful. You understand? Really? You're on my page. If you're on my page, you don't, you don't want me to talk for too long, then you come off my page. Angel on hand. A social media manager is there. So any disrespect to me or my wife, she's going to delete you all right away. She's an administrator, I'm telling you. Because if you have, I'm don't, I'm, I don't mind criticism at all. But you see disrespect, you're gone. I ain't making no joke with that. All right? Go ahead, Chris. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, so seriously? Yeah. You had a lot of disrespect no, people only, only on one person, one or two pre people sometimes, you know, being stupid. <laughs> They're too I mean, damn out of order. You know, you know what I'm saying? You know. If you don't like what you're, what you're watching, just scroll through. Yeah. If you're, if you're not interested in what's going on here, just go away in peace. Eh? You know what I mean? Just go away in peace. If you don't agree with what's going on here, don't stay on the man life and disrespect the man. Simple. <laughs> right? <clears throat> Please don't thank you. Yes, so, go ahead. You're talking about over, over We're not going to waste time with them. We're going to just block them once we see they come. That's right? it. Block. No hassle. Right. I don't like, I don't, I deal with criticism. I could take constructive criticism. That's what it is because you're going to find people. Yeah. No matter what you say, good or bad, you're going to find criticism. You're going to have that. You could do the best thing in the world, they're going to still criticize you. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> Christ come, he do all kinds of, he heal the sick, he make the blind see, he make the lame walk, and still say yellow demon. Yeah. So this thing going to happen. You know, but don't be disrespectful, okay? That's all I'm asking. Don't yeah, disrespect man, my page. So. You could criticize as much as you want, but don't come and disrespect my page, man, because, you know, we could be very disrespectful if you want to, you know, but yeah. we try to be humble, you know what I'm saying? All right? People ahead, trying please. to teach health. I mean, if, it, if you're not interested in the teaching, just move on by. You may not, what, what may work for you, or what, what may work for we may not work for you. And if you feel like, you don't agree with what we're teaching. You just move on. Just yeah, move on. Give sure. people space who want to learn something. If okay? you don't believe in in, in, in in a God like I believe in, just move on. Don't, don't just move on. You yeah, don't believe that's your business. On. I believe. If you believe in something and I don't want I don't want to deal with you, I just don't believe. I don't tell you nothing. That's your belief. Don't come and tell me about delusion and I'm going to kind of crap because all of us live in illusion sometime or the other. Yeah, man. You know what I mean? That's you know what I'm not saying? nice. So, that's not you know? nice. We all human beings and... We have to be treated like that, you know? The same house a lot of people living in, somebody designed it. 
Yeah. The same car you drive is the same plane you ride in every day. Somebody designed it too. You understand? Yeah. So you live in an illusion because you believe somebody designed it anyway. Like All right? Your girlfriend Aruna on the live. Runa! Runa Neptune, blessed okay. love. Time for talking on the live. Go ahead, Chris. We'll be talking about doing some, some live stuff. Mm -hmm. You and I. We, yeah, yeah, well, we would have this, um, we, we're trying to do this, this pay-per-view. Um, good night, Mikey. We see Mikey on the live. Mikey, <laughs> Mikey. Mikey on the live. Mr. Worldwide. Mr. Worldwide. <laughs> Blessed. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, we want to do this pay-per-view. We're going to chat like a small fee so you can come and chat with Patrick, ask him a question, right? Yeah, ask a question we're gonna charge maybe like ten dollars you know ten twelve dollars and you know we're gonna have an open chat with Patrick and you're gonna ask him any question you want to ask you ask any question and he would answer a question so it's like a time or a moment where people wouldn't have to go and pay what fifty dollars for a consultation yeah. so you could just pay like ten dollars and yeah, just ask your question, you know. Um, yeah, so that's it. So people who are interested, yeah, right, you're gonna let us know. And we let you know the day. And, and we're gonna time. let you know the day on, and, and time it. by posting the day and the time. Right, because not everybody can pay sixty dollars to go through a consultation, you know. And I know how it is with a lot of people, so. We're trying to make it easier for our people to that kind of got to afford something to, you know what I mean? So um, we could give you some more information without even paying all that kind of money. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And again, I'm always saying to people, if you do a consultation with Angel on hand, 888-971-1757. Once you get a consultation, I don't want you to go back and pay any money again. We're going to deal with you on a level from there. I want you to people to know that because it's not about money. You know what I mean? You pay that first uh sixty dollars to talk to, to to have a consultation you don't have to go back and pay anything again you can talk to me as long as you want it the next time okay so i'm just letting everybody know that for a fact okay all right yes, wonderful yes 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 mikey mikey have to come and help us set up on a more technical and aruna aruna neptune <laughs> you see what i'm drinking what what um junior george couldn't drink you see i'm sipping it ain't it <laughs> all right we're going to go to to fibroids ovarian cysts pcos endometriosis and the causes and we're going to tell you how you can treat them. Yeah? Yeah? You want to finish, you want to finish something? Um, well, yeah. We were okay. basically talking okay. about... Um, we were basically talking about that. And I know a lot of people would be interested yeah. in, in paying like a less amount of money to come and talk than paying... How much do they pay for a consultation? $60. $60. So we just want to give people an opportunity. It was an idea we had to give people... You know, who may can't afford, cannot afford to pay like the whole sixty dollars for yeah. for one consultation per yeah. consultation. So we're just trying to open up a, a, a way that people can pay less, you know, and maybe we can have more people, you know, come and ask questions, yeah. give somebody an opportunity, make it affordable for somebody who um would like to ask questions, you know. Because so there's a lot of poor people, right? Yeah, there's a lot of poor people. There's a lot of poor people who cannot, cannot handle yeah. or cannot afford to pay $60 yes. to speak to Patrick. Yes, so this is a chance for you to pay a little $10 or so to come on the live. It will not be much to come on, on the view and ask your questions to Patrick. And this is what we're trying to establish now. So basically... That's it, and I'm, I mean, I'm hoping that a lot of people would um, join us. Yeah, so let us know if it's a good idea, and then we could try to work on a day or two during the week. Yes. And we can work that out, okay? Uh, and wanna... maybe we can do it like, we, we're thinking about doing it like maybe every Thursday. We could choose a day and we would do it yeah. every day in yeah. the week. Every, right. every, that day that we choose, we'll do it on that day. Yeah, because you know, I'm always um, moving, so you know, got to get me tired on a little bit. Okay, um... To answer the question I asked before, women, how many women lose their uterus every year in America? Over 200,000 women lose their uterus in terms of a hysterectomy to fibroids. Over 200,000 women every year. And some of the hysterectomy that is, that, is, that is being done by some of these doctors was not needed. Factual. Even in Grenada. 
We have lots of women who have growth in the uterus and have uh, growth on the ovaries. And the first thing that the, the, the medical doctor said is to remove the, the ovaries or remove the uterus. Even the fiber, if the fibers are even like even three, one, three or four centimeters, they want to remove your uterus. Endometriosis is one of the most is one of, is, is one of the most detrimental reproductive problems that, a, that women have on a regular basis. And that is where a lot of women also use the, lose their uterus to endometriosis. And a lot of women who have period pain do not know that they have endometriosis unless they check the doctor and find out that they have that particular condition. I'm going to tell you what caused that and how you can lessen the, 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 the effect of the pain that you get every month from these conditions because there's a lot of things on the earth, in the earth system, or in the plant kingdom that can repair your troubles. You understand? Because you did not born with a fibroid. You were not born with PCOS. You were not born with ovarian cysts or ovarian, uh, what's kind of growth in your ovaries. You were not born with endometriosis either. You developed that from something. We're going to tell you what they are, okay? So we're going to go to the screen now, Krista. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go from there. Yeah. All right. So. Okay, turn the camera around. Turn the camera on. Okay. Okay. Now. Fibroids, ovarian cysts, PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, endometriosis, and their causes. Now let's go to the first one. What caused endometriosis? Keep it straight for me. So you can, can you all see the screen? So you all can read and jog it down. Because they're making you all feel there's all kind of stupid things that cause endometriosis. You know what I mean? What caused endometriosis? Endometriosis. 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 Sorry. Endometrial cells. In the form of what we call patches or legions of the endometrial tissue that and that tissue lines the uterus. Don't forget, endometri, endometri, en, endometriosis is caused by endometrial cells in the form of legions or patches of the endometrial tissue and that tissue lines a woman's uterus. Now these patches and legions appear on the outer surface of a woman's body, such as the woman's ovaries, such as the woman's bowels, intestine that is, such as the woman's fallopian tubes, making her become uh, uh, infertile and causing pain during, before and after menstruation, which is caused by stimulation of what the last words are, Estrogen dominance. I'm going to leave it so women can read it. And go by them gynecologists and ask them, and here they're going to tell you, how oh, he's talking crap. That's factual. Because a lot, of, a lot of research is being done on endometriosis now. And some of these brothers who've been in school since in the 60s, they don't go refresh their memory or their mind. They have this one way of teaching. You know what I mean? That's gone now out, 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 out the window now. Endometrial cells in the form of legions or patches of the endometrial tissue that line the woman's uterus mm -hmm. appears on the outer surface of the body, such as the over, a woman's ovaries, bowels, or her fallopian tubes, causing pain during her menstruation, and that is caused by, a, by the stimulation of estrogen dominance. Too much estrogen in a woman's system. That is, one of the, that is if not the main cause of endometriosis. Although... Some women don't have estrogen dominance and do have endometriosis, but a small amount of them don't. But the majority of women who care or come down with endometrio endometriosis is what? Estrogen dominance. Go to the next chart again, Christian. Next chart. Fibroids. What caused fibroids? Estrogen dominance. What caused fibroids? 
estrogen dominance. Ovarian cysts on the other side over here. What cause ovarian cysts? Estrogen dominance. What cause fibroids? Estrogen dominance. That's what it is. Now we're going to tell you why you have growth in your uterus. And how you can save that reproductive organ that Jehovah God put in you forever, not to lose it. You're not supposed to take it out. Because you know for a fact, once you remove your uterus, you're going to menopause fast, especially if you remove your ovaries. You know what I mean? And you have all kinds of trouble. You have what we call vaginal dryness. You don't feel for no sex. You have, you know, I mean, painful uh, uh, sexual intercourse, especially when you have endometriosis. Endometriosis would cause you pain during sexual intercourse. You understand? Because the whole legions and patches that stick on the outer body of a woman's uterus cause all these pain. And that's because you're eating wrong. So we're going to show you how you can repair endometriosis if it's not chronic, whereby it is causing you to have patches on the intestine, causing you to have constipation. You're going to teach you that. Because you lose your riches because you don't, a lot of women can't change the diet. So we said that 200,000 women every year lose their uterus to uterine fibroids. And black women is full of that over here. Come over here. Black women is full of those. African women, our sisters, is full of fibroids. Young girls, now in the 20s, full of fibroids. Full of ovarian cysts. Full of PCOS. You know what I mean? And then they give you, when you have PCOS, they give you a drug for diabetes cause called metformin. That ain't, no, that ain't gonna fix your, your PCOS because they're treating you for insulin resistance. Because they're telling you that PCOS makes you gain weight, make you make your hair drop, make you have, can't have no, can become very difficult to become pregnant, make you grow some beard, but they don't tell you why. So we're gonna teach you how to remove PCOS, how to get rid of fibroids if they're small enough, how to get rid of ovarian cysts. Now look at this one over here, come over here. Ovarian cysts, we're gonna stick on this one for a little while. You have two kinds of, of cysts on the ovaries. One is called a dermoid cyst, one is called a functional cyst. So the doctor will say to you, well, if you have a functional cyst, when you are having a period and you are shedding your eggs, that cyst, if it's functional, will be removed. If it's a dermoid cyst, the doctor will say to you, well, you know what, we have to remove it surgically because it can't move. It's dermoid. See, the functional cyst moves out when you're, shedding your, when, you're, when you're having a period or you're shedding your eggs, but, it will, but the, the dermoid cyst stays. But he don't tell you that you can remove these cysts by increasing uterine circulation. We're going to teach you how to do that tonight with foods that is not detrimental to the ovaries and to the uterus. You understand? Wonderful. All right. Now let's go to the females endocrine system. We're going to come back to the liver and we're going to come back to the intestines because these two organs right here, your liver and your intestines is very significant in a woman's health. These two organs here, your liver and your, and your large intestines is very significant in a woman uh, removing or preventing fibroids, ovarian cysts, PCOS, and even PMS. Premenstrual syndrome. These two organs, liver and the bowels. Large bowel, that is. We're going to tell you why. Let's go to the glands. Go to the glands a little bit. Now, we said before that the endocrine system is a lot of glands. And they're very, very, effect, very effective. Some doctors don't know what the hell they do, but they're very significant. And they, they depend, all these glands, depend on the digestive system, the earth system, for sustenance. So once you start messing up the earth system over here, okay, sir? once you start messing up the earth system, and this part of the body here and liver, it must, this common sense, that you're going to affect not only the, the wood element, means the liver, but you're going to affect over here, 
the endocrine system, the glands. So let's look first at the hypothalamus gland. The hypothalamus gland is not really a gland. It is fiber and cells that is right in the middle of the skull. The hypothalamus gland, don't forget it says it it's a gland, but in the 1950s, they were just starting to figure out what is the hypothalamus gland. See what I'm saying? That's why we're going to have another program with Dr. Sebastian Peters, who is very open-minded. He's an endocologist. And we had him before, but every three months, this brother goes and studies the new thing about the endocrine glands, and he comes up with new information. We're going to have him again sometime soon, okay? Although he's very busy. So the hypothalamus gland, right over here, right in the middle of the skull, is not a gland because it is fiber and cells. You understand? But it is very significant in keeping all the other glands in balance. It even deals with your temperature. It even deals with your, your appetite. The, hypo, the hypothalamus gland does. It even deals with your eyes. You know what I mean? It deals with everything pertaining to the human body. The hypothalamus gland does. But it's not a gland. It's just fibers and cells that is put together in the middle of the brain. But... The hypothalamus gland is very significant to the pituitary gland. What's one over here? And that's where women's health come in right now. Now, the pituitary depends on the hypothalamus. And the pituitary have three parts. One is called the posterior, one is called the osterior, and one is called the medial part of, the, of, the, of, the, of this particular gland right here. In the brain. It's right in the middle of the brain here. It's right below, your, behind your ear and your eyes, the, the pituitary gland. Now, the pituitary gland depends on the hypothalamus gland for a signal. And once that signal from the hypothalamus to the pituitary is in balance, a woman's pituitary gland, right over here, starts normalizing a woman's prolactin levels. Remember that your prolactin level is lactation. Once it starts to normalize, your prolactin level as a woman, all of a sudden, your, a woman's luteinizing hormone and her FSH follicle stimulating hormone become in balance, right in balance. They're balancing back together. Once the signal from the hypothalamus is sent to the pituitary and it is in balance, your pituitary numb in turn normalizes your, your luteinizing hormone and your follicle-stimulating hormone, which normalizes a woman's what? A woman's estrogen and a woman's progesterone. Now, once the pituitary normalizes a woman's luteinizing hormone and a woman's follicle-stimulating hormone, automatically, a woman's uh, the woman's estrogen and progesterone become balanced. And once these two hormones are in sync together, balanced, B-A-L-A-N-C-E, a woman's ovaries will start to produce enough eggs. She becomes fertile. You see what I'm saying? No growths. Because the progesterone is very significant to normalize the negativity of the, of the estrogen levels. You can't have high estrogen and low progesterone. You have to have them in balance. In order for you as a woman now to have them in balance, you must go to the pituitary gland and you must have the hypothalamus and the pituitary working in sync. And because you as a woman eat so bad, eat the wrong foods, lots of hormones, you throw off the ecology of the balance of these hormones, of these glands, and once you throw them off, they start chucking your hormones in balance, and then you start to have troubles in your ovaries. You start having troubles in your uterus. You start having troubles in the cervix. You start having troubles in the reproductive system because now they are in balance. And in order for you to get them back in balance, you have to go over here to the earth. You have to go to the earth system, and you must go to your liver because your liver is significant in your hormone balance. Don't forget that now. Let's go back over here. 
the pituitary, the pituitary gland, which is the under the control of the hypothalamus. This gland right here, over here it is. The anterior part of the gland is the is the front of the gland, and the posterior part of the gland is the back of the gland, the rear of the gland, and the medial part of the gland, the pituitary gland that is, is in the middle. The anterior part of the pituitary gland deals with men's sex hormones and the sperm count. The anterior part of this gland, the pituitary gland, deals with a man's and a woman's sex hormones. You understand? Because it sends signal to the ovaries. This one here, the anterior part of the gland. The anterior, don't forget to tell you all women that your all anterior part of your all pituitary gland deals with your all sex hormones and they regulate thyroid function. They regulate your ovaries. The anterior part of the gland. Don't forget that. There's the anterior part, there's the medial part, and there's the posterior part of the gland. The posterior part of the pituitary gland deals with your temperature, but it also controls your liver over here. The posterior part of the gland, it controls your pancreas, your kidney also, your honest, and your adrenal glands. This gland right here, the pituitary gland. Significant. But if the pituitary do not receive the right signal from the hypothalamus gland, your pituitary gland will be thrown off and automatically all these other glands will suffer because now the anterior part of the gland is not working right and the posterior part and the medial part of the gland is not working properly so you have troubles in the reproductive system. You know what I mean? A gynecologist can't tell you that. You have to go to an endocologist. And he will explain things to you if he knows about the glandular system. If he knows about the endocrine glands properly. So, the anterior part of the pituitary feeds your ovaries. Because it has to normalize the function of your luteinizing hormone and your follicle stimulating hormone. But it also deals with the function of your thyroid gland. The pituitary, that's why it produces TSH. Thyroid stimulating hormone is produced in the anterior part of the pituitary. Not in, us, not in the posterior part of the gland, in the anterior part of the gland. So the anterior part of the gland, the pituitary gland that is, controls a man's testicles for sperm count, his sexual organs, it controls a woman's ovaries, it controls the thyroid gland. The anterior part of the gland. Now, let me show you why you have growths in the ovaries now. We're going to go to the fibroids in a while. Once the pituitary is not normalizing a woman's luteinizing hormone and a woman's follicle stimulating hormone, which cannot in turn balance back a woman's progesterone and estrogen. Her, a woman's ovaries start producing androgens. Androgens means men hormone you start producing because there is an imbalance between the hypothalamus gland and the pituitary and now the pituitary cannot normalize your LH and FSH so both your progesterone and your estrogen level is imbalanced and all of a sudden your body start producing your ovaries start producing Men hormones, androgens. And that's when you start to get your bed. That's when you start to get your PCOS. That's when you start to get weight gain. That's when you start to get hair loss. Now, because now, it, the pituitary part of the gland is affecting not only the ovaries, but it is also affecting the adrenal glands, which is sitting right on top of your kidneys right over here. They are also part of the endocrine system. And once the pituitary gland is not working well, and because that pituitary in the posterior part of the gland is controlling the adrenals, automatically a woman's ovaries start producing all these androgens, and all these androgens are being produced from where? From, um, from the adrenals. DHEA, testosterone. And then you start to get beard. You got to shave a little bit. 
All your, all your feet have hair. Your hand hairy. Because now you are producing too much of the men hormones. Why? Because you threw, you threw off the balance of the endocrine system. And why you threw it off? Because you were not depending on Wall Street right over here. You threw off the, the, your, 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 your threw off the balance of the digestive system, which is the earth system. And once you threw off, you threw off over here, and you threw off your liver, the function of that particular organ, you're going to throw off over here. They're going to be in balance. And that's the reason why the body is one entity. So once you don't have a balance between your estrogen and your progesterone, your ovaries start producing men hormones, and you start to get PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. So when you want to fix PCOS, you don't have to go to the pancreas. You don't have to take metformin. You don't have to work on insulin resistance unless, unless you have weight gain. Because he, the doctor, knows that once you start suffering from PCOS, you won't get weight gain. And once you get weight gain, you will have insulin resistance. So he puts you on a drug for that. But he don't know you have to go to the pituitary gland. He don't know he have to go to the hypothalamus gland. Put them back in balance. He don't know you have to go to the adrenals and the thyroid. Because they all work together. Because your thyroid gland metabolizes your menstrual, your menstrual cycle. Because it depends on the pituitary gland, on the posterior part of the gland. The posterior part of the gland. Right? Now, we're coming down. The pineal gland, right behind your neck, he's the spiritual gland of the body. The spiritual gland of the body is your pineal gland. Your thymus gland. Looking right here. I'm always tell you all about the thymus gland. Your thymus gland controls your spleen with hormones. And your thymus gland controls your lymphatic system. Macrophages, T lymphocytes. We ain't to go there because we're talking about women's health tonight. But all of them work together. And they keep you well. Now, the adrenals depend on the pituitary. So if your pituitary gland is not working well, you're going to have troubles in your reproductive system. And the woman, you're going to get ovarian cysts, you're going to get ovarian uh, of PCOS, and you're going to get what we call uterine fibroids. Because it is not normalizing your LH and your FSH, which in turn is not normalizing your progesterone and your estrogen levels. So you as a woman, now eating all the foods that have estrogens, pesticide, herbicide, chicken, Cheese, eggs, milk, plastic bowls, plastic cups, putting your water in plastic bottles, putting the water in your refrigerator, drinking the water that way. All these are culprits that tax up against a woman. And they not only cause you to have uterine fibroids, but they cause you to get breast cancer. And they cause you also to get uterine cancer too. So they are the culprits for your growth in your ovaries and your growth in your, in your uterus. Synthetic hormones. That stacks up against a woman. See? So he didn't born with ovarian cysts. He didn't born with fibroids. He didn't born with endometriosis. He developed these conditions. Because you ate the foods that full of pesticide, full of DDT, full of herbicide, full of hormones. So all of a sudden, you become estrogen dominance. And you have a low level of progesterone. And once you have a low level of progesterone, you have the man-made estrogen, not the one that God made now, the man-made estrogen taking over your receptors. You know what I mean? And he can never ever keep your breast tissue in balance. He can never ever, the man-made estrogen that is, can never ever keep your ovaries in balance. He can never ever keep your uterus uh, 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 in balance. Can't. And then you get endometriosis because of your estrogen dominance. There we go. Right? Hope you all understand. Everybody understand what I'm saying, right? I ain't talking too fast, right? So we see there is a connection between the hypothalamus gland, the pituitary gland, the ovaries, the thyroid gland, and the adrenals. And the, on the posterior part of the pituitary, the, uh, the, uh, 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 works on where? On the, this one over here, your liver. And your pancreas. And your kidney for temperature. For water regulation. This gland right here. The pituitary gland. Regulates a lot of them. They depend on him. Your liver depends on the pituitary. And your adrenal depends on the, on, the, on the pituitary. Your pancreas also 
depends on the pituitary for insulin regulation. And your pituitary gland, the, your kidney also depends on the pituitary for water regulation. Don't forget the anterior, the medial part of the gland, and the posterior part of the gland. Don't forget, three parts of the gland. Very small gland, but have three parts. The medial part is not that significant, but the, oste or the anterior part of the gland and the posterior part of the gland is very significant in a woman's health in preventing a woman from getting fibroids, ovarian cysts, and endometriosis, and PCOS. So you must go to here, and you must go to over here. All right, let's go. A little bit. PCOS causes estrogen dominance. PCOS causes estrogen dominance. And when we're going to fix PCOS, or when we're going to fix uterine fibroids, we cleanse, we cleanse the liver and the intestines to remove excessive amount of estrogen. The one that man put in your food to kill you long term. The one that man put in your food to give you breast cancer. Beside the, the BRCA gene, one and two. The one that the man put in your food to give you PCOS, to cause you to have that. The, the, all the home of the man put in your food, and the pesticide and the herbicide and the DDT, to cause you to have ovarian cysts. You understand? We clean them out. Let's go back up. This organ, 500 functions. 500 functions. And this organ is very significant in a woman's health. So lots of women who have PCOS, lots of women who have PMS, premenstrual syndrome, clean your liver out, that disappears. Lots of women who are moody, and you're all, pre you're, all, you're all messed up because you're all period coming and you're all, your all liver messed up too. Clean your liver out. And the PMS disappears. You understand? If you want to get rid of Growths in your, in, your, in, your, in your uterus, clean your liver out. He's crazy. We talk about liver after doing the reproductive system. It does. So if the liver, if the liver manufactures, breaks down, and excretes hormones, it have a lot to do with your hormones. It have a lot to do with your ovaries, and your uterus, and your heart, and your lung, and your brain. You understand? So, this organ breaks down estrone into estriol estriol is the least effective estrogen that will harm you if the liver cannot remove or break down huh, estrone into estriol and that estrone and you have bad liver health a lot of 90 percent of the world population have bad liver health you know chris mm -hmm. if the liver cannot turn estrone into estriol to be excreted via your bowels over here. You're going to have recycling estrogen come back into the portal vessel, and you are going to have troubles in your reproductive system. And let them come and do that. That's a fact. You understand? Now, let them do it again. When you go to the bathroom to have a bowel movement, you excrete what? Estrogen. You excrete hormones via your bowels in the fecal matter. So that's common sense. Go tell anybody that once you have, you are constipated. You're not going to the bathroom on a regular basis. Your liver ain't working well, and the liver and your, and your bowels depends on your liver to move. If there's no bile producing this organ, how are you going to move this organ over here? You have to be because they work together. So if there is no movement in the liver, and if there's no movement in the large intestines, which is the sewage system, and you can't remove waste, the waste comes back, back, and goes back into the portal vessel, and then your liver, which isn't working well, producing bile, toxic bile, goes straight in your gallbladder, you start to get gallstones, and then send it right back into the, into the, into the diadem, you come back again, you get gastritis, you get ulcers, and it automatically goes straight back into the uterus and causes you to have uterine fibroids. The body is one entity. You have to keep it as one entity, you have to keep it in balance. So what the, 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 the blood goes back with waste and hormones, your fibroids start to grow. 
because the doctor will tell you your fibroids grow on estrogen. And when you, be, when you pass the age of 50, he tells you because your estrogen level drops, your fibroids are going to shrink because they can't feed on estrogen no more unless you become constipated. You see what I'm saying? So that is significant. So in order for you to fix fibroids, in order for you to get rid of ovarian cysts, in order for you to repair endometriosis, in order for you to repair PCOS, you must go to the earth system right here, the digestive system, and put it in balance. And you must go to the liver and put the liver back in balance and have the liver to remove excessive amount of hormones via your bowels. And then automatically, you're going to use some herbs and you will start shrinking and moving things. And you're going to see everything start to go back into place because you're in balance now. Let's go. Don't forget, you have to start over here. You must start in the digestive system. Must. Right here, right here. If you want to fix fibroids, let me tell you something you can do to use now. Let's look at some supplements. Now, when you have fibroids, let's go with fibroids first because we're talking about endometriosis. Have a, lot of, a lot of women get a lot of pain when they have endometriosis. We're going to tell you what you can do to cause the pain to subside and even stop the pain if there's not too much patches or lesions in the ovaries or in the bowels. Because usually if, the, if, the, if there's a lot of lesions in your bowels and you're suffering from endometriosis, you're going to get constipated. You won't care move the bowels because there's a lot of lesions there, okay? And then you're going to have to go on, the, the, doctor, the doctor do this laser surgery to remove them, but they don't remove certain, a lot of it so it comes back again eventually, okay? All right? All right. Now, when we are going to repair uterine fibroids, ovarian cysts, and PCOS, we use herbs that deal with uterine circulation. Remember that when you have a growth, they call it myomas in the medical term, of fibroids. When you have a growth, any part of the body is because you have stagnation. And once you have stagnation, you're going to get growths. If you have stagnation of the blood, you're going to get growth. So fibroids are blood, tissues, and muscles together that form in the uterus and feed off of estrogen. So in order for you to remove your fibroids naturally, if they're not too big now, let's say about 5, 6, 7 centimeters, 8, 9, 10, 15 centimeters that big. You get it that big, you have to come take your uterus out eventually because... <laughs> They're too big, like a baby. Right? Okay? Let's go to the first herb. First herb is called chase tree. C H A S T. You could come a little closer for me, please. Chase tree. This herb, we just talked about the pituitary gland. This herb called vitex or chase tree goes into, in the pituitary gland. And help the pituitary gland to normalize a woman's luteinizing hormone and a woman's follicle stimulating hormone, normalizing a woman's progesterone and estrogen, and helping the fibroids to stop grow, and helping the ovaries to remove or to stop grow with a cyst or having a large ovary, or preventing PCOS, chest tree. But you can't use it alone. You have to use it with other plants to do other things. That's why herbal medicine is significant. So you're going to mix chase tree with an herb called danqui. Danqui moves the blood. It builds the blood. It also helps the liver to remove excessive amount of estrogen. Danqui does that. So when you use these two herbs together, one is working on the pituitary gland, one is working on, on moving the blood, and building the blood, and helping the liver to excrete excessive amount of estrogen via your liver to be dumped into your bowels to be excreted so you can have growths and then we shrink things too so it moves the blood but it also shrink things also so that's the two herbs next herb you're going to mix them all together we call it a fibroid blend 
Don't forget, we call it a fibroid blend or, my, or, or a myoma blend. Raspberry leaves. This herb we use is part of the Lamasi family. And it helps to strengthen a woman's uterus and tonify the woman's muscles in her uterus, especially when she's pregnant and prevent miscarriages. So what we do, although we are moving the blood and we are working on the pituitary gland to normalize a woman's LH and FSA to normalize her progesterone and estrogen, we are also strengthening and tonifying the uterus with the red raspberry leaves. Sarpalmetto. Sarpalmetto is not a shrinking plant. It is used for men's, men who have troubles in the prostate gland. But it's not only a prostate herb. Sarpalmetto also builds up the immune system. It's good for your lung. But it also prevents a woman's fibroid or ovarian cysts from getting bigger. It stops the growth. And it also deals with a woman who have growth in the uterus or in the ovaries and have pelvic congestion, pelvic pain. Sarpamento stops that. So you must use them together. Chase tree, danqui, raspberry leaves, sarpamento. Let's go to the next one now. Next one is called shepherd's purse. And we use shepherd's purse for bleeding because lots of women who have fibroids and they're big, they kind of cause women to have menorrhagia. They bleed a lot. So we put the shepherd's purse in the mixture in case the woman has menorrhagia and she's bleeding. But shepherd's purse also help to shrink the fibroids also. Dandelion root, danshen. Danshen is an herb we use, or called salvia root. We're talking about moving the blood. Once you're going to move the blood, things will start to shrink. So we start to use danshen in the mixture to move the blood, work on the heart, and also cause things to move out of the uterus. It's called salvia root or danshen. Romania. Romania we use, look at down here, to build the blood. Could you put it for me, please? R E H M A N N I. I want you to mark it down so then people can fool you all. Romania is a herb we use to build a woman's blood because it works through the spleen. So once you have fibroids or you have menorrhagia and you have excessive amount of bleeding, we put Romania there, although we put some herbs to stop the bleeding, we put Romania there to also build the blood through the spleen. And also I have the liver to what? To make the blood. See, herbal medicine is not just going to jump, jump, put some herb in a, pot, in a pot and boil it and drink it. They don't work like that. You have to learn about herbs. Cypress root. Cypress root strengthens a woman's reproductive system. But it also helps to move the blood and also remove fibroids, ovarian cysts, and also any growth that is found in a woman's uterus. And peony root, they do the similar, do similar things. White peony root or red peony, they do similar things. Cinnamon is in the mixture too. If there is passive bleeding, we're going to put in some cinnamon in the mixture. See, that's what I use. Then I use some red clover. Because red clover have insoflavones. Podiaku, and it's a shrinking plant. Cleavers. Cleavers is there because cleavers is put into the mixture in case the woman have uh, troubles in the, in the lymphatic system and the lymphatic system to be drained and because the lymphatic system is also vested in fluids that flow parallel to the bloodstream. So you put the cleavers there to move or drain the lymphatic system with, the, with, with the red clover and help the vessels to flow better and thin the fluids so that things can move. So and it also works on the on the bladder in case the woman have a big fibroid and the fibroid is, is leaning on her black walls and causing the woman to unit on a regular basis. Yeah? We use supplemental there and cleavers. Violet leaves should also be used for the lymphatic system. Buckton bark can be used, or butternut herb can be used if the woman is constipated. And don't have good liver health. 
and the liver is not producing enough bile, and the woman is retaining estrogen via her bowels, we can put in some buckton bark to help the woman to move the bowels nicely and some dandelion root to help the liver now to get rid of environmental toxins and help the liver to produce more bile. So that the bile can be dumped into the intestines so you can have movement of the blood and also movement of the waste and hormones from the sewage system. That's how it works, man. But you're going to have to change your diet if you want all these things to work for you. So we're going to mix all these herbs together in one bag. I call them a fibroid um, a blend on a, a PCOS blend and an ovary cyst blend and an endometriosis blend. And I say, okay, I'm going to put you on a program. No food with estrogen. Leave the cheese alone. Leave the pigs alone. Leave the eggs alone. Leave the milk alone. Leave the plastic bowls alone. Leave the plastic cups alone. Do not put food in your plastic bowls. Do not put food in your plastic bowl and put it in your microwave oven. Do not put water in your plastic bottle and put it in your refrigerator. And I'm going to put you on some foods, primary foods, secondary foods, that are going to help with your hormones, to normalize your hormones. And all of a sudden, endometriosis disappears. Cyst gone. PCOS disappears. And uterine fibers start shrinking. And you can determine if they're shrinking, and go back to your doctor and take another ultrasound and you could compare them to the numbers you had before. Let's go to the vitamins now. Vitamin C with bioflavonoids. Don't forget, a woman who has endometriosis should always, always take vitamin C buffered with bioflavonoids to prevent inflammation. Bioflavonoids are compounds in vegetables and fruits that help to strengthen the capillaries and they should be used for women who are, going to, um, who are taking tamoxifen too. Um, we're going to talk about it in another program, but Vitamin C with bioflavonoids should be taken by for women who have endometriosis with 300 milligrams of B6 and 15, 50 milligrams or 100 milligrams of the B complex. And it helps to metabolize estrogen by your liver. Don't forget, the B6 and the 50 milligrams of the B complex, a good company, you know, I'm garbage this on the street now, good companies now, you take them together, they help to metabolize estrogen by your liver. Follow me. Especially if you have endometriosis or if you have uterine fibroids, ovarian cysts, you must take vitamin C with bioflavonoids for inflammation. Especially women who have endometriosis, stop the pain. Vitamin E, 400 IU per day. Vitamin A, 1,000 IU per day. And the progesterone cream should be rubbed on a woman's breast once per day for 21 days, changing the location to your navel and your thigh every three days. So every three days, while you're using your progesterone cream, you're going to rub a certain amount on your breast for three days. You change the location for the next three days, to your navel, around your navel, and then the next three days on your tie for 21 days, then you stop. And even primrose oil to reduce the inflammation of what we call endometriosis. And DLPA for pain. Look it up, woman. That works as morphine. Just as good as morphine. It stops your pain. 300 to 400 milligrams per day, taken one week before your menstruation. If you have menstrual pain, and if you have what we call uh, uh, dysmenorrhea, you know what I mean? Endometriosis, uh, uh, endometriosis with pain, you're going to take the DLPA one week before your menstruation with calcium and magnesium, and uh, another herb called Indian pipe or Jamaican dogwood, and you're not supposed to have no pain. Period. Let them have it on the board for me, please. Yeah, it's been there. Wonderful. I want you to the market dog, or you could go to Christy Books. Because Christy Books have Christy, Christy, uh, Christy have a, a a program that we created for women who have endometriosis, PCOS, ovarian cysts, and uterine fibroids. All these conditions, all these things here, you can use 
You can get it at Ambrosia if you want. You can get it in a health food store, but you can call Ambrosia 718 They have all the blends already. And then you can, Christy put a program together with some foods that we put together for a woman Sorry. who is suffering from all these conditions. She have all the food you can eat for the days that you're going to use to fix your choice. It's on K-R-I-S-T-Y-B-W-K-S dot B-I-Z. And you can get all the food, the juices she used. You have a, a video where she juice all the juices that you're going to need for the program and all the, 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 the foods, and the, the fruits and the vegetables and the, the, the primary foods, they're all there. And how you can use them for these conditions and for the amount of time that you're going to need to remove your fibroids, your ovarian cysts, your PCOS and cut on your pain from your endometriosis. Dig it. You know what I mean? God put everything on the earth for us to use and you're going to use the medical system, the, 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 the man-made stuff. Man-made stuff don't fix nothing. The laser stuff it come back. They remove your, 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 your fibroids that come back. Hmm? If you have big fibroids, don't check Patrick there because they're too big. So we give you a uh, we can, you can give you can go to Ambrosia get a, a product called Vasquistatin, and that will work for big fibroids made by some doctors, and they realize that it shrinks a lot of big two hundred rats. So we give it to you if you have a big fibroid, but the diet must change. You must go to Christie Books, and then you're going to see that all the, all the foods are there, and all the juices are there. She she juice what what you should use for the the, the period of time. That you need to get rid of your, of your of your troubles because too much black women black women full of that they full of fibroids you know what I mean black women full of it and black women full of ovarian cysts and full of PCOS and they're getting the age back and getting younger and younger because the food chain is all messed up you know what I mean you understand you know what I mean so we only teaching health and prevention and we only teaching our women our women not to get fibroids. You so can, you can, you can prevent it. So seven and over, do you need surgery? No, you don't need surgery. So seven and over, I, I do treat it, but with other stuff. Not with just the herbs here, because the herbs, they will take a longer, a longer period of time. So once you're seven centimeters are over, I will introduce the herbs with the vasculostatin and the diet. And then what we do is we look at the, the numbers, the centimeters, how much fibroids they are, we look at the endometrium. We look at the ovaries. If they are enlarged, we can use um, black haw if you have ovarian pain or blue quash if there is pain in the ovaries. But we look at the endometrium. We look at the size of the endometrium. We look at the, the size of the fibroids. And then if, we are, if they have more than 7 centimeters, we would introduce the vasculostatin with the program because it shrinks big things, big tumors. And then what we do is we look at the numbers. If you have four fibroids, we look at if it's in the... In the in, in, inner part of the uterus, outside of the uterus, and we look at the follicles. We look at the dull sac. If there is, if there is um, fluid in the sac, if, if look, 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 we look to see if you have PID, pelvic inflammatory disease, and if you do have the fibroids, we would make you keep the ultrasound that you had before, and if you treat it for two months, we say okay, um, um, Patsy, go back to your doctor now after two months, and take another ultrasound. And compare to the one you had before. So say you had four fibroids. And say two was seven centimeters. And two was five centimeters. And you go back to the doctor after the program. And it says the two that was seven says three centimeters. And the two that was five says one centimeter. You know for a fact that what you're doing is good. So you continue. See, that's how it works, you know. You know what I mean? And, and then again, I'm going to say to women again, some fibroids respond to herbs and some don't. Honest. So don't let, don't let no herbs come and tell you, oh, all herbs shrink. That's not true. Some fibroids respond to herbs and some fibroids don't. If they don't, then you stick with the doctor. You remove them surgically. It's your last, your last choice. Or if they're too big, like 15, 17 centimeters, then you might have to remove your uterus. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, we don't want women to remove their uterus because God put it there for a purpose to be you are the creator of civilization. So basically you're telling them to try the natural way first. All the time. And I mean 
there's a 98 percent chance 90, 95 to 98% chances that the fiber shrink because we do, we do it all the time. Right, right. You know what I mean? But because I, we, it works. It works, but we're yeah, looking at works. bigger fibers. You know, fibers go from sizes, go from, you know, one centimeter, two centimeters, five centimeters, ten centimeters, seventy centimeters. So, in essence, what you're saying is do not be quick to, to run and remove or have surgery. No. Before you try. No. The herb. You know, surgery should be your last choice. I'm telling you all, women, surgery should be your last choice. Because lots of women remove their fibroids and they come back and say, oh my goodness, girls, man, I'm so sorry, I'm feeling sorry. I, 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 dry, I have dry vagina, dry all this thing, all the hormone, the, 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 the menopause coming in because you all want to prepare. Now, the, the Chinese woman and the Japanese woman, they don't have fibroids. They don't get fibroids easy. easy. Uterine fibroids and uterine cancer and breast cancer and hurt is, uh, is minimal in Japan and China. Why? Why? And they come and tell you soy is bad. But these people eat a lot of soy. See what I'm saying? So if they eat a lot of soy, how come they come and tell us that don't eat the soy because it's not fight to estrogen, but the Chinese woman eating it? And the Japanese woman eating it too. But they ain't, ain't getting no breast cancer. They ain't getting uterine cancer. You know what I mean? Because they're eating the fermented soy. They don't use the one that they're giving us over here, GMO. They use the fermented soy. Because soy have phyto. They don't tell you that. Phyto means what? Plant. Sauce. It's not the one that the man putting in your food, your chicken, your eggs, your cheese, and your milk. You know what I mean? It's plant. Hmm? Some foods have it, phyto. So phytoestrogen is plant source, meaning that when it get into the liver, it is to be removed. But when the same one you eat from the cheese and the eggs and the milk and the plastic bowls, plastic cups, pesticide, herbicide, your liver can't remove that. It's foreign to your liver. How your liver gonna remove that? You must have growths. You know, but we love, we love to eat the foods that is not good for us. You know what I mean? So. The Chinese women and Japanese women don't get fibroids, easy. They don't get breast cancer, easy. So how come the black women in the, in the West getting it so regular? How come the black women and other women in the West full of breast cancer? Hmm? How come the black women and the other races in the West full of uterine cancer, full of ovarian cancer, full of cysts and fibroids and PCOS? How come? And the Japanese woman who eat a lot of soy, it's unheard of over there. Something is wrong. You know what I mean? Uh, eat, well, eat what you grow and what you eat. It's mm -hmm. time for us to eat the foods that we, that we have to eat the foods that you grow and the foods that you eat that you, that you, that you grow and the, and the food that you grow and the growth grow you eat. Because when you eat the food that you grow, it corresponds to your bloodstream. And that's why we're having food in season. You see, we're eating plums now. We're eating a lot of plums, eating mango because they're in season. You have to eat the food that are in season because they correspond to your bloodstream. That's why food comes in season. You understand? For a reason. So when you have these seasons, we have two seasons. You have mangoes now. You have oranges now. You have tangerine the next time. Then the season gone, you get cashews. You get plums. You get eat them in season. That's a key. I mean, but they have food now. All around season. Fall, same food. Winter, same food. Spring, same food. You know what I mean? Summer, same food. And we, just not, we do not know how to eat the foods, man, in the seasons. And that's why people are so sick. I mean, so, sick. Explain something about the water. Because water in plastic bottles, I see a lot of people saying so they can't have water in plastic bottles. Ow, that's not what he was saying. I said, plastics. You know, right now you see Antigua, you go to any supermarket in Antigua, you can't Put your food in plastics. Mm -hmm. It is banned. Put it in the freezer and it is banned. It. Plastic is banned. Now, plastic have the cups. Some of them is some of them is something. Some of them have vegetables now. Vegetarians. Huh? Plastic have zeno hormones. Zeno mm -hmm. hormones. So you take your plastic bottle. You put your water in there. You put it in your freezer. 
you freeze it, and you take it back out again after a while, and then all of a sudden, the xenohormones in your water leak into the bottle. You start drinking that, you just don't see the hormones. You see what I'm saying? Water warm again, put it in your plastic. Or heat, or hot <coughs> foods. Right? Hot, hot foods. Food. And that's why I said to the baby, people, people was listening, I said, if you take your foods and you put it in a plastic bowl, and you put that food in a microwave oven, the xeno hormones is going to seep into your foods. Mm -hmm. And you are going to ingest it. And it's going to affect your liver. So all the work your liver is supposed to do, it has over 500 functions. If your liver has to leave three functions to compensate for all the xeno hormones in your plastic, it's going to leave something un unattended and it's going to harm you eventually. That's common sense, man. And a lot of things, something a lot of parents doing is freezing plastic bottles of water for their children. Yeah, crazy stuff. Right? Freezing plastic bottles of water or juice for their children, and that is yeah. not good. And that's why you have young children now having boobs quick. Eight, seven years old, they have breasts already. Huh. You know what I mean? At 16 years old, they look like they're 25. Yeah, they the food chain. Juice juice the food water. chain, man, is killing our children. And if you look at the cancer rate now, the cancer rate is going to get worse, it's going to get higher. And people can say, I'm talking crap, but you won't see. I might, be, I might not be around, but I'm telling you all, in the not too distant future, cancer is already the number one killer of human beings. You know what I mean? Especially in the Caribbean countries. It's going to take over America from heart disease. It's taking over all over the world. Because why? The food chain is messed up. The food chain. And again, I told Chris last night, Lots of people don't clean the system up. Look at her right here. She lost 12 pounds in one night. Yes, boy. Because yes. she did a cleansing last night. 12 pounds. 12 pounds. In one night. But it was not like, like fat stored, eh? Belly. 12 Fun. pounds of waste in her intestines. Waste. And how many people is carrying more than 50 pounds of waste in their intestines? Lots of people. Especially them big belly man and them. If you have money, a big belly, that's waste you have inside it. So, you know what I mean? Know a lot of people would ask how. Yeah? 60. We did John that. Wayne, who died from colon cancer, they found 60 pounds of waste in John Wayne's intestines. Mm -hmm. Elvis Holland, Elvis Presley, who died from a heart attack, they found 40 pounds of waste in his intestines. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. You know what I mean? Imagine I was weighing 160. And you weigh 147 after the flush. 160 last night. I mean, normal weight is 148, right? I gained some weight because I hadn't been doing a... I hadn't been cleaning in like two months. You know, I had been eating and no cleaning. I must admit I've been strained. And I started to feel sluggish, so I did the cleanse last night. And, well, before I took the cleanse... I weigh 160. 160 pounds. Well, I was up all night last night. Went to the bathroom. Went to the bathroom. Yeah, and I'm laughing. I say, <laughs> yeah. Go to the bathroom. You will feel went better. To the bathroom, passing out everything. That's right. That's right. Until my bamsi burned. And we went to the, we went to jog this morning. We went to an exercise. Uh, yeah, boy. 147 and pounds. See. Weighing myself this morning, I was 147. So I was carrying all the waste in my tongue. And that's what I'm trying to tell people and every day. I said to you all, people are carrying too much amazing. waste in their intestines. You have amazing. to clean it out. Because not all the time you gain the weight eh? in the tissues and the fats, right? Not all the time you gain the weight in fats. It stays in your yeah. stomach. So if you have, if, you, if you're constipated, you're not going to the bathroom three, four, three, four days a week. Where the waste is going? And your intestine is five feet long. Hmm? It can stick in there. And if you are a woman and you are prone to getting growths in the uterus and you can't remove the excessive amount of estrogen via your liver, via your bowels, you will have recycled estrogen. So you are setting yourself up to get breast cancer. You are setting yourself up to get colon cancer. You are setting yourself up to get 
cancer in the ovaries in the uterus hmm? and also uterine cancer breast cancer all them kind of cancer even lymphatic stagnation all because the, 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 the digestive system is imbalanced is not working well and you have to treat your digestive system as what well, as Wall Street where everything happens everything happens in Wall Street processing center messages are gone to the hormones in order for your hormones to work well the endocrine gland to work well it must get or receive the right messages from Wall Street which is your digestive system period what you use? Should we share the cleanse? Share the cleanse, man. It's on Christy Books. That base where you're gonna well, get your yeah, fiber it, is there. It's there too, but yeah. you can also do it this way, which I did it last night. Which um sometimes you know you could do it this way. Sometimes you want to go through do the whole cleanse, and this way is okay too. Where yes. You would do a sm like quarter cup of hot water with three tablespoons, three to four tablespoons of Epsom salt, and I took that, had a one, one side, cut a lime in half, one side of lime in it, you stir it till, till the Epsom salts dissolve properly, and after I drink it, I would take one tablespoon of olive oil and take it like that. And that was it. I could drink a glass of grape, pink grapefruit juice after. It is very tough to drink. <laughs> People with, what they call it, shallow stomach. Yeah. <laughs> People with shallow stomach, I'm sorry for you, but the lime does help, you know, the taste. The lime does help with the taste, but I just battled my belly and I just took it last night and it did me really well. So three tablespoon, three to four tablespoon of Epsom salts in quarter cup of hot water. Make sure it's dissolved properly. One side of lime, you cut a lime in half and use one side. Right, and you take it, and after that, like one minute after, you take one tablespoon of olive oil and you just drink it, and that's it. And then you go to bed, you and don't I, I, eat anything after, after that, after that yeah. you just let that work through your, your, your whole intestine for the night. So, you should be going to the bathroom around what, two, Three, four two in the morning. yeah. And a lot of people, um. They say they can't take the Epsom stuff because they raise the pressure. So, if you know you have high blood pressure, check with your doctor, or you um you can use another method of cleansing instead of the Epsom salts, or you can take some magnesium, um about 1200 milligram before taking the Epsom salts and keep the pressure down. But talk to your doctor first before you take the Epsom salts if you know your pressure gonna rise, or you can just do another cleansing with some maybe some castor oil, some cascara, mm -hmm. or some buckton bath. All right, but I'm telling you. If you see Waze this morning, yeah, boy. she was amazed. I told her every day, I said I to her, amazed. don't lapse, man. You lapse them criminals. I had a lot of waste. They're it? waiting for you to lapse. You know them criminals? Them viruses, the HSV, the Sega Megalo, the hepatitis B virus, the cancer cells, the bacteria, the yeast, the parasites, the fungi. They're all waiting for you to lapse. They wait, for, they wait for me to lapse the other day too and they give me a, a, a serious cough, serious cold, an infection in my lung. I got a lapse. I went in the wrong scene about everybody but myself. You see what I'm saying? They wait for you. And as soon as you lapse, they take hold of you. you gotta be strong. Mm -hmm. Gotta keep on cleaning. Yeah, true. And that's why I said to keep cleaning regularly. If you want to eat your own little junk food, yeah, go ahead. But clean. 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 Because ain't no virus like a clean system. Ain't no cancer cell like a clean system. Hmm? Ain't no parasites and yeast and fungies like a clean body. They hate it. They want you to keep on feeding them them junk food, them sweet, them sugars, them starches, the refined starches. Clog up the mucous membranes. Clog up the cell membranes. Increase irritation. Increase inflammation. That's what they like you to do. They want you to do that. And then all of a sudden, you start to get all this swelling in your joints. You start to get lupus. You start getting cellaridoma. You start getting saccharidosis. You start getting uh, cystic fibrosis, COPD. You're losing fibroids, ovarian cysts, uh, syndrome, endometriosis. Why? Because you slipped. 
You know what I mean? It was not cleaning the earth system. So if you want to keep the earth system clean, man, you got to do the flush, you know what I mean? God damn. Eh? Who's that? It's a comment. Read. <laughs> Read Trisha. It? 12, 12 pounds of poops. Lol, I'm going to try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, people don't we believe. Was, we was laughing at the same thing this morning. Yeah. Read. We was laughing at the same thing because... We just do weekends and we just be laughing and laughing just like you because it's like it's amazing. Like how it's amazing how we carry all this waste in we belly and we don't even have no idea. We have no idea. That's what I'm saying. You know, we don't always carry it as fat, say eh? we carry it in the stomach. No, we gave our son a cleanse last night. So he came this morning and he wanted to use the bathroom and we only have one bathroom, so he was saying, Mommy, she said, Well I want to go faster than you, so you have to wait. Well, we'll be clean our children too. I clean my son out because as soon as that, as soon as your child starts getting that, that first belly ache, it's telling you that something is wrong with your child that's just system. Mm -hmm. Clean your child out. That's a sign that something is wrong. The first little tummy ache your child get is telling you that something is wrong in your child's digestive system. Clean them out. See belly ache gone, gone. Can and I clean you, them out. Can you get the the, the Epsom salt? I know a lot of all didn't think that. Epsom salt is to be taken on the inside, but it is. Remember, Epsom salt will be so clean, not to be taken on the inside, blah, blah, blah. blah. Oh, get it. This is what we use all the time, and we do it like once a month. We do it once a month. This is the Epsom salts we use, right? This is what we've been using ever since. Yeah. Ever since, that's what we use. And the castor oil doesn't really work good for us because we... We want to do deep cleaning, so that is a better solution for us. So we try to go that way. We try to use that, the Epsom salt, because it works better for us. Castor oil is a bit petty for the, clean, the kind of cleanse we're looking for. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the Epsom salt has always been doing a good job. Um, we never had any issues. We never had any complications. We never had any problems. And we good. Hmm. So we drinking now? This is what? This is garlic juice in. Oh gosh. Can't drink it right. Stink. Garlic, Can't ginger, I had so onions much for the day. Beet. And what we get? That's it? That's it? Yeah. Mm. And I sip that every day, every night. Get rid of them vampires in my system. You know what I mean? Alright? So, are we all ready to go now? Um, thanks for watching, and I hope you all listened. Uh, uh, take, 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 um, took down all the information there, and then go to christybooks.biz, K R I S T Y dot B B I Z, K R S K R I S T Y dot B I Z. Download the program in terms of how to eat. If you have fibroids, if you have endometriosis, if you have PCOS or ovarian cysts. And that program will help you because they're going to teach you how to eat the food. She have a, a video on, ju on the juice, what juice when you're on the program. Go back to your doctor after you do the program and look at your results that you had before and compare to the one that you have that you're going to take from the, from the doctor, okay, after the program. All right? And if you want to get any herbs, again, again, I don't really sell herbs, um, um, but we try to get our online store going with our, our, our um, tinctures. With our antiviral stuff, we have things for the, we're gonna have things for the heart. We gonna have a uh, women's formula for women who have women who have imbalanced hormone. We gonna have uh, uh, stuff for kids soon. You know, everything takes time. Um, but for the time being, you can call seven one eight four six nine zero nine eight five and ask for Shante or Trisha, and ask them for the blend and the pro the, the, all the stuff you have. You see here, you can ask them for that. Or if there's a health food store near to you, you can also go to your health food store and get these, these, these herbs. Mix them together. And if you want to talk to me and to get some information or to guide you, you can call 888-971-1757 and ask for Angel on hand. And she will turn you on to me and then we can go from there, okay? All right? Don't forget and don't forget to give uh, uh, all the praises and the glory to the Jehovah God because he is the only true God. And live it forever and ever. Amen. Right. Don't, wanna, don't give no glory to no man. <laughs> Jai, yes. The the um grapefruit juice, orange 
orange juice and castor oil olive oil castor oil is optional it's optional we we doesn't use it with with that mixture we just use the epsom salts because the epsom salts works better for us with that that's a complete cleanse you want to explain the difference with this which one the complete cleanse with the grapefruit juice the orange juice and the epsom salts oh well, there, there is a slight difference so well with the with the grapefruit juice and the and the olive oil and the and the, and the um the all the orange juice and the castor oil it is more for people who have gallstones right. you know what i mean and the liver flush is totally different liver flush goes into the day and a half but the gallbladder flush per se with the castor oil and the and the um the, uh, the, uh, the grapefruit juice and olive oil and the orange juice is just for a lot of people who have gallbladder congestion and they have what we call toxic bile where the bile comes in from the liver with a lot of excess amount of minerals and waste and get into your gallbladder and you get stoned from that or you go back into the diadem. So that's for mostly that particular condition. When you have, uh, you know, gallbladder, if they're small, if they're small stone and they could pass through the bile duct, that's what the gallbladder flush is for. But if you don't have gallstones or you don't have a gallbladder, you can still use the flush because your bile duct is still there and you can still get stoned in the duct. Because, because, because remember that your pancreas and your gallbladder share one duct, and they're both under your liver now. So usually, if you lose your gallbladder, you still have the duct there, because the pancreas is still there. So you can still get stones in the duct. And when you get stones in the duct, because the extra don't pick it up in the duct, though, you will still get a little pain under your breast bone. And that's why you eat a lot of grease and fats and cheese. You get a lot of trouble when you, have, when you don't have your gallbladder. But that's only a gallbladder flush for gallbladder stones. If you don't have the gallbladder stones, you can do what Krista did, just with the Epsom salts and the lime, and you can just take a, you can take a tablespoon of olive oil or coconut oil, like, and then you could do a, um, a, a glass of pink grapefruit juice, or you can take a, 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 a one drop of peppermint oil and put it under your tongue. And that will help to clean up the whole digestive system and your liver and your gallbladder and your intestines, you know? So you don't have to be the orange juice and the grapefruit juice to per se, you know what I mean? All yeah. Right. You don't have to put a whole amount of, of hot water with the Epsom salts. You just put in like quarter cup. Like not even quarter cup, little less than quarter cup because mm -hmm. you're using, well, I did three tablespoons, three tablespoons of Epsom salt, three full tablespoon, And I use a little less than um, quarter cup. I use a little less than quarter cup of hot water, um, boiling hot water. And I made it very little bit. Reasons for that is because I know it's tough to drink, so I want to have a little bit to drink. I don't want to have a lot to drink. So I'm, I mix it just enough so it can dissolve in there. So I use a little bit, a little bit of hot water, a little less than quarter of your teacup. Little less than quarter of your teacup. And you mix it till it dissolves. So you don't have to use a whole lot of water because you know it tastes bad and you don't want to have to drink a lot and then vomit because I know some of all your belly weak <laughs> so we'll bring it, so we'll bring it back up. and all you're going to have vomit yeah. before they taste it mm -hmm. well it tastes bad terrible for me too but you know I just I toughen up because I know I want all I wanted to do is get down inside yeah, you, you can, you, and you can also put it up with a straw get a straw and let's pull it you know let's pull it up you know um, okay we ready to go um <clears throat> We in Orlando on the 15th of June. I think I'm there from, from the 11th to the 15th. Um, you can go to Nikki, Nikki Lanes, N-I-K-N-I-K-I-L-A-N-E. -I 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 go to our page on Facebook. And you're going to get all, all the information there. And um, the, the, the seminar, I think, is almost sold out. So um, the seats are kind of limited. So um, you can go to her page and get more information about the seminar there in uh, 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 June 15th. And I'm in New York on June 18th. And we are trying to do. We are trying to hook up a seminar now with a cardiologist, Dr. Daigo Humphrey, and we're trying to get Dr. Joe Kerber, who is a chiropractor, because a lot of people came in came in with troubles in the back, with the spine, you know, spins, nerve and stuff. So we're trying to get our brother because we, uh, Joe, Joe, Joe Kerber and I worked together for a year and a half, and I have a lot of a lot of respect for him, a lot of faith for him, and he's a very good brother. He's not about any dollars and cents. So we're trying to have a big seminar there in New York. We're going to give it a date sometime in June, late June, early July. And we're going to have Dr. Dr. Daigo Humphrey 
and myself and um, Dr. Um, Joe Kerber, and we are trying to get a cancer specialist there to do a big seminar there in July, in June or July, and um, we're going to give you the date when it's going to be at and where it's going to be at in, in, in Brooklyn. And um, it, uh, because a lot of people are suffering from, from heart disease in, in, in America. And I'm working now with um, um, Mr. Humphrey. Um, I think he's a wonderful cardiologist. He's open-minded. And he's trying to avoid going to people's chest now. So we, we are trying to work together in terms of working in, on the both, the both ways and trying to keep it, keep it helping our people to, to, to prevent heart disease. And um, we are going to, we are, I think he and I are going to, we, we're trying to write a book together now on the heart his perspective and my perspective in terms of herbal medicine. So that is always in the works, and we try to work with people who are open-minded to help work people to stay better, to stay well. You know, so that's the road I want to go on. I don't want to go on a road where I fight against a doctor and he fighting against me. I don't work like that. Mm -hmm. I try to work with people to get the benefit of the person who is sick. You know what I mean? If the person can get well one way, that's all good. If they can get well the other way, that's all good too. You know what I mean? That's my motto, okay? All right, so there's a lot, a lot of things happening soon, and um, we want to say... Um, we're going to pay homage to our brother, Robert Grappi. You know, he died, I think, last week, Saturday. And he was our, 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 one of our social media manager. And he had an asthma attack. And asthma, tell people about asthma. Don't get asthma. Had an asthma attack at the hospital, and he died in there because of a brain aneurysm. So, you know, we want to pay homage to the brother. He was a very lovely brother. And um, we had a lot of plans together to go into Africa, into Europe, and do some things to help our people in Africa, in Uganda, Ghana. Nigeria, South Africa, and even Ethiopia. A lot of plans with a brother called Odo from the Netherlands. Um, but as, as I said before, when we plan, God, Jehovah God, have another plan. I mean, it's good or bad. So we're going to pay some homage to our brother Robert Grappi. We love you, brother, but you know, we have, we have these two children there. We're going to keep his, his, his legacy alive, and we're going to make sure that his two kids, his two children, is okay. One is eight years old, eight years old, and one is five years old, five years, five years old. So we're going to make sure that we're going to take care of our brother's Children, because we are our brothers and sisters' keeper. Blessed night, and do give thanks and praise to the Most High. Okay? Yes, Wonderful. Yes. Angel, I felt upset after I drank it. I felt like I wanted to throw up. But what I did after, I just had some juice. I had some strawberry juice, and then the taste just went away. The feeling just went away. So, after you take the... After you take the... The mixture you could just use something sweet use um some juice some good tasting juice behind it and that would make it that would make the taste go away and the feelings go away the bad why all right. you keep saying resume all right so don't forget we're going to be talking about the, the we have the paid for view soon yeah the paper and yeah and we're going to have that organized a lot of people can't Come afford ask, yeah, you could ask questions and you could just you know um Pay a small fee, and we're gonna answer your question as, as quick as we can, because a lot of people are getting um, angry and saying, "Oh, well, I don't answer them." You, you, all you ask her. You all don't know, you know. He gets really stressed. My workload, my workload is high. It's very high. I, I very get. You know, I get depressed because I, I can't answer everybody, and I'm so sad because there's so many people ask. Her. Let, let her tell you. Yeah, he does get depressed sometimes. I have to tell him put on the phone. Mm -hmm. You know, cause. There are times I, I see him sitting there and it's like he's trying to answer every question and you know it it you could see in him that that is becoming a problem. You know, it's becoming a problem but I understand that he's already in this and he have to do what he gotta do to help you know, to help people who need the help, you know. But his job could be very tiring, it could be very Disturbing, it could be very stressful, you know. And yeah, I'm in a clinic, huh? It's it's just not easy, you know. And every minute the phone ring, and sometimes I just get angry when the phone rings so much times. Like I just get angry. I just have to tell him, well, turn down the phone. But for some reason he just not turning it down, you know. But I guess he always thinks that somebody who dying may call <laughs> you know you always say somebody who dying may call and oh i never knew you know he may be able to to save somebody's okay. life but yeah the job can be very see the job see see it? the job is not easy thousands of messages thousands of them answered. so if i don't answer you right away don't get angry and say you know 
Um, you thought about my health care practitioner. I, I, I answer, when, when I, can I do? But I have to sleep too. I ask at 3 o'clock in the morning, I, I, I go to bed very early, and then by 3 in the morning, I'm up mm. answering, answering a lot of people who I didn't answer before. Then I have so many people, over 5,000 people in WhatsApp alone. And two phones, eh? The Greenland phone, the New York phone. Lots of them, they're all full. Then I have to go into Messenger, and there's thousands of people there again. It's not, I'm not a robot, you know, so you all have to understand. I'll, I'll get to you as soon as I can, and that's why I, create, I give a number, 888 Nine seven one one seven five seven for people to call, because I know it's going to come like that. I I, I want to help as much as I can, and I, I mean, you know, we be trying our best. That's why I teach prevention. Don't get the disease. Mm -hmm. You know, stay healthy, and that's why we have programs to keep you all well, so you all have to run and and and, and just spend bad money at places that you, you don't need to spend it. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying to you, I always tell people don't spend bad. You don't. If you don't need to spend the bad money, don't spend it. Stay well. Yes. Eat Crystal. right. Uh -huh. Yes, Crystal. We can. We can only. He can only do so much. Eh? He can only do so much because it's not fair for one person to be pushed in a corner, you know. And and some people they call and they they curse him out. You know, they would they would say bad things to him because he didn't get back to them on time and. <laughs> People, this is not some nice. Of them say, some of them say I'm a fraud. <laughs> this is not nice. <laughs> it's know? crazy I stuff. Mean, I know it's not nice sometimes <coughs> when people message and they can't get, you know, I respond right away, but, you know, he does be sitting trying. And even though he has set a time, even though he set a time, because he does have a time in the morning time when, you know, he would answer people's questions. But there are some people questions that just never get in he just never gets into because there's always some new questions but you know something mm -hmm. maybe there are times you should just go right down in the bottom like in the bottom of your question <laughs> come back up. and come back up because that's <coughs> the problem you see when new people message and and calling in and the old question going in the bottom you see the, old, the people who message first yeah. The yeah. questions would go all the way down yeah. the bottom of these hundreds of messages. God is good, man. So God maybe what you should do is start going right down bottom. in the bottom yeah. and come back but up. God because is good, you know. People who message first need answers. Yes, you know? true, true. <laughs> it's not fair. And, and well. remember that. Remember that. I run a, a business over here. I have people coming in from abroad. I have people coming in again Saturday who have cancer. We have people coming in again the week after because I'm leaving on the 11th, so it's tough. Then I run a clinic. I had to come home. I just come with the family, and if I'm don't, if I'm on the phone, they go crazy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm on the phone all in the morning time. It's tough. You know, I'm, I have a point of consultation from 7:30. I only take till 9:30 because I run a clinic from 10 to 5. Yeah. So from 10 to 5, I'm busy. I have a lot of because a lot of people over here sick too, who depend on me to come down and see about them. You know what I'm saying? Local people, that is. You know what I'm saying? So I have to come back, sit down here tired because you have to bust your brain. You think? You think? You think? Reading your brain every day with people that figure, figure out three, everything that's easy. Yes, yes. You that, got brain fog and brain tired, just like everybody else. I'm imperfect. I'm not that, a perfect person. That's you, know, you know what I'm saying to you? Mm -hmm. I'm not. Imp I'm not perfect, and I could get sick anytime. All of, all, any one of us could get sick. I could get cancer. I could get anyone. But I have to try to prevent these things, mm -hmm. so I don't try to stress myself out. And you that's know what the mean? problem. You see, he takes care of so many people. You know, and he, I'm always telling him he's taking care of everybody but himself. Eh? There are times he forgets himself. You know, and I say, sometimes I just get angry with him and I just say, you're studying everybody but yourself, you know, and I just say, watch you getting sick, you're getting sick. I just tell him that so he can feel some type of way because it's true, you know. Hmm. Um, there are times he would have headache because the tension is so much, hmm. you know. Um, he would travel and go abroad for his seminars and... and from seven to nine, ten in the night time, he's sitting behind that, that desk seeing people and, you know, it's only like once, one time for the day he would get a break and he would call us and, you know, we would talk. Sometimes I'm on the phone with him right through while he doing, you know, consultation with people um, when he is abroad and that has be so depressing and I'm watching him and I saying, oh gosh, Patrick, you need a break, boy, you need a break. And he's so dedicated to the job and that's how he earn his, his life um, allowance, you know, that's how he make his money. So at the same time, he 
you have to pay his bills, you know, you have us to take care of. <laughs> you know, that's why. I always try to tell him if he falls down and he's dead. Well, we're gonna suffer. Well, of course, I'm gonna pick up the piss, you know, but I mean, <laughs> we won't have him no more to help. First, yeah, because we know? came in from New York Wednesday night and we had to travel the next morning, right? Yeah. Early, we had to jump on a plane for 6 o'clock to Chuck Tantiga. I just had to cancel Bermuda and I had to cancel the Bahamas because it's, it's very tiring for me. And the mind, you know, and it's the mind, when I'm, I don't run after money, you know. I don't run after that. I run after life. You understand? Because life is riches to me. So I don't run after, I don't run after material things. I run after life. Yeah. Because you can have all the material things in the world. You don't have life. You don't have health. You, you can never ever enjoy all the material things that you have. You can't if you don't have good health. Mm -hmm. So I don't run after material things. I don't run after money. I, don't, I run after life. But when you have life, you have happiness. Mm -hmm. And you have riches when you have life. It's common sense. Because wisdom will bring you riches. You know what I mean? And you can dispense the riches in the right form, in the right way, to people who are in need. You understand? So look, we have a brother who just died from prostate cancer all the way in Texas from Grenada. You know what? You think he had? You ever think they fight and over land, this, that? They all, they all, we, all, we all die and go back to the earth where we came from. So why would we run and fight over the material things that we're going to leave behind and they're going to still be there and somebody else going to enjoy it for how long and they're going to still die and leave the same thing behind again and it's just a cycle every day. So I run after life. Mm -hmm. I don't run after material things. I don't run after dollars and cents because the dollars and cents will come. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, if you don't notice the spends, your dollars and cents to help others, to pick them up, you in trouble with the Most High. So I run after life because life is my riches and life is my happiness. Blessed love and good night and give thanks and praise to the Most High. Bless. I always tell him when he fall long and dead, he can't help all you. He can't help nobody. When all that stress him down, he can't help nobody. You understand? So. He got to take some time and take care of himself now. Because when I see him looking so stressful, I just get scared. Like, I just get scared that, you know, I go lose him. And I know he's healthy and he's stage and thing, doing his health. And, you know, he's very, very skeptical about the way he eats and, you know, things like that. Because he don't want to get sick. And sometimes I, I just watch him and I just say, Oh gosh, you know, take your time because I don't, I don't want nothing happen to you. Cause when I see you working so hard, I just get scared. You know, cause I just see you looking like, like he go die on me any time. But that's when he tired, you know, like he tired, and I just see it in him. So I just try to tell him to take care of himself so he could last long with us. He's supposed to, he's supposed to die before. <laughs> he's supposed to, he's supposed to die before me, but. I pray to God that I wouldn't have to, I pray to God that I would go first because I can't stand the pain of losing him, you know? Uh, I mean, we God, going God it. may have to forgive me for saying that, but we are waiting pray, for the kingdom I pray, of Jehovah I pray that I go earth. first. I pray that I go <laughs> first before him. Yeah, Let him stand the pain of losing me because I don't feel I can bear that. We ain't going nowhere. We ain't going stay until the end of time. So, that is good. Good night. Bless your love. I know people was um asking about my hair growth. My hair growth now. I just wash my hair and I use a lot of shea butter. You know, Patrick was always um telling me to use shea butter in my hair when it was growing. I cut it down flat two years ago. Mm -hmm. And it grew in like two years. It grew I cut it real, real short, like down. And it grew in like two years, two, three years. Going on three years now. And I use a lot of shea butter and natural um, oils. I use coconut oils in it. I use a lot of herbal hair products. But um, I'm more, while growing it, I'm more used to use shea butter. Just wash it and grease and shea butter and that's all. It does grow pretty fast. So that's it. I never really use nothing much. So, yeah. You want to give the people your number before we go oh, because the, we are about to lock up. Yes, the number uh, again, um, 
For consultation, you go to 888 um, 971 The website is not www.patrickdev.org. It's not working again. It's shut down because the brother died, okay? We can't get into that website. So do not go to that website at all, period. We are creating another website now, and but for the time being, you're going to go to you're going to call 888 971 1757. You're going to talk to Angel on hand. I think she's on the she's going to write it on the post too, and then she's going to give you the, the, the appointment to talk to me, okay? And you can call Ambrosia at 718-469-0985 and ask for Ashanti. You can ask for Trisha. And they will help you with the, with the formula that we have for different conditions. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And um, um, what again? What is And then you go to K-R-I-S-T-Y, ChristyBooks.biz. Mm -hmm. And then you can download. Lot, we have lots of programs that we have, Yeast and Parasite Cleanse. Mm -hmm. We could be starting another Yeast and Parasite Cleanse again in June, before the full moon. It's on Christie Books. You can also download it and prepare for that particular cleanse because every three months we do that particular cleanse to get rid of yeast and parasites in the body. And we have other cleanse for, for uh, cancer prevention, breast cancer, the one now for fibroids and endometriosis. You could go to Christie Books and they have all the foods you can eat to get rid of, the, of these conditions that you have, okay? And the reason why I'm doing these programs is because I want people to learn. I don't want to feed you a fish. I want to teach you how to fish. So when I teach you how to fish, you're going to become independent of all of us. And you're going to do for yourself. Mm -hmm. And then you can go and teach someone else in the process. Because at the end of the day, each one, teach one. And we don't hide nothing. Anybody hiding anything from you all? They ain't real. You understand? So each one, teach one. And we're doing all these problems. I can, I can fix the whole world. True. But if I teach somebody that lives in Africa, or somebody in Australia, mm -hmm. or somebody in Zambia, well, you know, you teaching I'll be teaching you now, they can teach you can teach somebody and else. And mothers and children. Pass it on. Mm -hmm. Don't hide it. Because at the end of the day, we are our brothers and sisters keeper. Blessed love and Jehovah God should be given all the glory and all the praise. All right? Okay, good night, people. Thanks for watching. And we're about to lock off now. So everybody have a good night.